Have you ever thought about working in childcare? Watch this video and hear me, Sarah, interview Anna, Megan, Joanne, and Becky. Okay, first question. Can you tell me a little bit about what your childcare experience is and what where the setting was and what the hours were like? Hi, my name is Anna. I've done lots of kinds of child care, but mostly it is directly doing child care for families, um, either on a um, as-needed basis or on a semi-regular basis. Um, I babysat for lots of families when I was growing up, and that was my only job. I also did things like running VBS camps and, and different things like that when I was um, still in high school. Hi, my name is Megan. Uh, my experience in child care um, was mostly through um, lifeguarding. I was a lifeguard for nine years um, from age uh, 16 uh, to 22, and I also taught swimming lessons, um, and I taught preschool age for swimming lessons. Um, and I did that um, full time in the summers only. So I worked about 40 hours a week, but I did it during the summertime so that I was able to um, work on my schoolwork during the school year. I have worked, I owned a child care program and ran the child care program for 17 years. Um, I started out first in my home and did a setting with a smaller group of children, mostly by myself. And then I moved to a different location away from my home and I hired staff and I had um, classrooms. Um, and I had infants from six weeks old up to six years old in my child care program, but I also had a before and after school program and sometimes a summer program where I took older kids. So I did go all the way up to age 12. Also, the hours that I worked were 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. I started out when I was in like high school and I volunteered at a church daycare. I also, instead of going to study hall my senior year, I went and helped in the um, one of the special ed rooms at the element at elementary. Um, I did a lot of babysitting. Um, I did nannying where I would um, stay at the house while the parents were on vacation, and um, took care of the kids like from day to night, everything, and spent the night there. I even had a nannying position when the mom had a new infant boy. My job was to sleep in his room, and when he woke up, I had to get him out of the crib and carry him to her so that she could nurse him so that it didn't disturb her sleep. I also worked as a toddler room teacher at Memorial Hospital Child Care Center, which no longer exists. Um, I ran my own child care at my sister's house in her basement so that she didn't have to, because she had four kids, so she it just saved her a lot. Um, I was a day camp counselor at the YMCA and multiple church camps all over the place, and I was an early childhood special ed teacher. That was my last stint. What experience, safety training, or knowledge is required to work in child care? My experience was that there was no safety training that was required. My parents taught me a few things, um, and I did learn the basics of C CPR, um, and then I always had my family's phone number handy so that I could call if there was an emergency, and I had the parent's phone number handy if there was an emergency, um, but I didn't take any safety training. I do know that once I grew up and I was a parents' as teachers coordinator, I offered a child care um, training seminar for girls and boys in our neighbor or in our local community who are interested, and we gave them tips on how to keep kids safe and how to um, how to keep kids entertained. And we did that in partnership with the local um, EMS department, and they taught a child CPR course at the same time. So those types of things are available, but I don't think they're required. 
So for me, my um, safety and training looked a little bit different just because I worked at a swimming pool and was required to um, have a certification in lifeguarding um, and first aid CPR to be able to um, help in case there was a water emergency. Um, and so I did that um, through high school. Um, I attended um, a lifeguard class and then um, during the summer before I started working, I also um, did my um, CPR and first aid training and we had to renew that every year about. Um, and then um, also I took a class for swimming lessons specifically to help me learn more about how to best teach um, children how to swim. When you do decide to work in a child care facility, there you have to have a background check. Um, you have to be 18 years old to work there. Um, also, there are safety trainings. Um, you have to do a safe sleep training to be in the child care. Um, CPR and first aid are required. Um, I became a CPR teacher while and first aid trainer while I was a um, ran my program and so I was able to train my own staff on that but otherwise you would have to go through that kind of training but lots of times they'll hire you first and then put you through the training um, there is like TB tests and a physical you have to get um, so there is a lot of little paperwork that needs to be done to be able to work in a child care um, facility Okay, what safety training is required? Well, I know that, uh, you know, CPR for sure, there were always um, lots of trainings on how to care for children. We had to have a background check, the TB test. Um, there was quite a bit. Um, I know that when I volunteered at the church daycare, they didn't require that, but once I started working um, at Memorial Child Care Center, it became more... Um, structured and so you do have to have a lot of training um how to deal with emergencies I know one time we had a student who um leaned on a bookshelf and it wasn't anchored and at, this was at Memorial Child Care Center and it fell over and it hit her toe and it busted her toe open crazy thank goodness we were like associated with the hospital because literally we were right next to the hospital but that was kind of crazy so yeah, there's a lot of training that goes into it. Um, I can't even name all of them, but yeah, you definitely have to have a background check now and, you know, the whole nine. What should you do if a child misbehaves? When a child misbehaves, um, what you should not do is any sort of spanking or any sort of hitting or physical discipline. What you can do is you can give kids countdowns. Like, I need you to come to your seat in five, four, three, two, one. You can also give um, kids an opportunity for a timeout if they really need it. Um, and you can let kids know that you will let their parents know if um, they have misbehaved. I used to babysit for a family um, with a kid who it felt like they were climbing the walls and I didn't feel like I had the skills to handle their misbehavior and in the end I just stopped babysitting for them because I just didn't feel like I knew how to keep them safe and it didn't feel worth it to me. Um, when a child misbehaves at the pool, a lot of times we have rules in place to keep people safe. And so it's pretty important to correct the behavior um, quickly. The tricky part is that a lot of times you're in a lifeguard stand or you're not able to get very close to the child. And so you blow your whistle at them, blow your whistle, and then um, try to get their attention. And sometimes if they're young enough, their parents' attention too. And then just explain the rule and um, try to help them like redirect that behavior um, and then continue to call them on it every time. There were a couple of times, especially with some of the older kids, um, where they would have to sit out on the side of the pool with me if they couldn't follow the rules. And that wasn't to be mean or anything. That was just because um, for safety reasons, you know, you can't run because you might slip and fall or um, you know, you can't dive headfirst into the water because you might hit your head. So that's, um, I had to be kind of strict in that way.
Well, that has a lot to do with the age of the child and the situation. Um, most of the time when they're younger, redirection is the first thing that you should always look at. Can I redirect them away from this behavior? Um, if that isn't something that works or as the child gets older in my program, we had um, a safe place or we called it the safe spot that you could go to away from the children, uh, other children and to calm down. Um, it had different things that you could um, hold on to, squeeze things to help you calm down while you're there as a child and you encourage them to learn how to do that and um, to figure out what was going on. And most of the time it was um, when they are calm, they can come back and join the group. Not a timed thing that I put them in. They chose to come back when they were calm. So we just l worked on um, how to control your emotions during that time period. Knowing what the rules are in your child care facility and the kids being reminded of these rules throughout the day, making sure you have clear cut rules, clear cut boundaries, and making sure that you remind them throughout the day. Our number one rule was to be safe, and my job was to keep them safe. So we referred almost every action of the child back to that rule. Are they being safe? Um, I need to keep you safe. Um, some of the jobs that they had to do was to pick up their toys out of the play area because that was for their safety. Everything that they did was to be safe. So if they were not being safe and they were choosing not to be this, uh, be safe, that was when they went to the safe spot. That was what the safe spot was for, was to remind them of safety and to help them calm down and learn to calm down and get a control of their feelings. So I think having a cons consistent routine, consistent rules are one things that will help you stay in front of the behavior um, before they get to misbehaving, before they even have to go to the safe spot. But lots of kids knew that the safe spot was a choice if they weren't able to make that choice for themselves at that time. I've always been an advocate of making sure that you uh, prevent misbehavior. And the way you do that is you provide a very structured schedule. And you make sure that your kids know all the expectations that you have. Um, I always used to say, be safe, be kind, be responsible. And it's so fun to watch a kid try to say responsible, but oh well. Um, and, you know, if a child misbehaves, it's always, especially the young ones, you redirect. And... When I redirected, I always made sure that I would tell the child what I wanted them to do, not what I wanted them to stop. So, like, what I meant was I would say, nice hands, please, or please walk, instead of saying, don't hit your friends, or don't run. It was always tried to make it positive. Um, I did have a safe spot, same as Joanne. For times when a child needs to step away and take a break. Um, you know, I also used to have, uh, if I had kids that didn't speak very well or whatever, I, I would just ask them, do you need a break? Let's go take a break. Um, and I always kept the students active. There was always something for them to do. And so they didn't have time to misbehave, um, like, out of the craziness, ordinary or whatever. I also think that it's in, important beyond having that structure and making sure that every child knows what they're expected to do is that you're constantly, as a teacher, speaking positively. And every time you see a student doing what they're supposed to be doing, I would always give them specific praise Good job keeping your hands to yourself, Johnny, or something like that. Just whenever I saw something happening that was correct, I made sure to praise it and really talked it up and made it very specific so that the kids knew exactly what I was praising and that that was another expectation they had of me. Did you have to do any lesson preparation? What was that like? 
For swimming lessons, I did have to do lesson preparation um, and I had to show my swimming lessons um, coordinator those every week. Um, we had a curriculum that we followed, which just means like we had lessons that were preset. Um, for each swimming lessons level, there were certain things that you had to learn how to do. Um, but then it was my job to make sure that I was teaching it in a fun way and um, to make sure that I had games and all the supplies that I needed um, before swim lessons started. Um, I followed a curriculum and I followed um, high scope curriculum overall, and that is very um, child directed. They did their um, plan do review where they did their own planning time. Um, they did work time, then they came back and reviewed what they did during work time. A lot of my lesson planning was having materials available, different materials, and then seeing what materials they would work with one day what they did, what kind of great interest they had in that, and then you tried to build on that. You tried to find other materials that went along with that and tried to build on their strengths um, with what they were enjoying doing at that time. So sometimes you might think you were going to do one thing and you saw that the children were going this direction and we went, yeah, we're going to do that. But always having materials available, but also having things ready. We'd have a small group time where you would direct that, the teacher, a little more, and you would have the materials ready for that. Um, each day could look different. Um, I just always stocked up on everything. We had lots of books, so anything that they were interested in, you would have books available for that, and we read a lot. But lesson planning was a lot of gathering of materials, like I said. You betcha. Um, I used to section my day into different activity times. And I, I mean, I had it written out and everything. And I would, uh, you know, when I worked at the Memorial Child Care Center, we had to follow, like, we had to come up with our own little structured thing. So, like, I always made it, like, uh, fine motor time, gross motor time, communication time, reading and writing, you know, obviously circle time. Um, and I would always have like buckets which, with each kid's name on the buckets. And so every day, depending on what activity we were doing, you'd fill the bucket with those activities so that they were just ready. So there was a lot of, um, cutting out, <laughs> cutting out lamination, cutting out paper. There was a lot of, um, you know, making sure that, um, like everything that I had to do with the students, that if I had certain students that had um, difficulties with certain areas, that their activity would be um, modified so that it would fit what they could and couldn't do. Um, uh, like, just things like um, if it was a cutting activity for fine motor, I'd have, like, special scissors for the kids that had a difficult time cutting. Or I would pre-cut really close to the line so that they didn't have to cut quite as much. Um, just stuff like that. So, yeah, there was a lot of preparation. Um, a lot. Was there a part of the day when you really wished you had more help than you actually had? And what kind of help would you have wanted or needed? Okay, the part of the day that I wish that I had more help was probably during lunchtime um, when you were preparing food and when you were getting meals ready. So you were preparing food and you still had to keep the children busy and interact with them and get them ready. And that was also another transition. Um, also after lunch, when you had lunch cleanup, having someone help clean up because during after lunch, you're getting all the children ready for their bathroom and going to lay on their cots for nap time. And but you still have this mess on the floor and you still have dishes to do. And most of the time then you spent your nap time doing a lot of cleaning. But sometimes you had to clean while the kids were still transitioning because it wouldn't be safe if there was still food on the floor because I didn't have major separate areas all the time that they would go to a whole different nap room or anything. So they would still be in these areas. So I think having help during 
that time and maybe transition time in the morning when you're doing breakfast and the families are coming in with their children. If there was somebody there to greet them and keep them busy during that time period would be wonderful. But I also do think a lot of the cleaning responsibilities that I had to take on also at the time I was trying to work with the kids, it would have been great if I would had help during that time. Um, definitely bathrooming and diaper changing. Um, you know, it was very difficult because um, some of the kids could use the bathroom, some of them couldn't. And so if you've got a person changing a diaper, you know, that that turns your attention completely to that and you can't watch what's going on behind you. It would have been nice to have someone else entertaining the ones waiting to uh, be diapered or go to the bathroom. Um, because usually I would have one, you know, the aide or the para or whatever with the kids that actually could use the bathroom. And then what, me changing the diapers that had to be changed. And you just needed some extra people around because it, those, those duties are like so intensive because you don't want to get messy. You know what I mean? Is there any way somebody can be involved with and work in childcare without having direct involvement with children? I think that um, it would be the things I just mentioned in my previous question in regard to the cleaning, um, the dishes. Um, so if I had someone coming in who helped in the kitchen, who did just the dishes, who um, helped sanitize the toys, who swept and mopped the floor, wiped down all of the tables, um, we would have time where we would just have to spend uh, cleaning windows and wiping down window sills and baseboards because kids are all over the place and their mouths are even going on the baseboards. So having someone who could come in and sanitize that and clean that without us having to do it during our time or having to go there early or stay later to do that, it would have been great to have somebody who could do that or who maybe somebody who worked for me that would have came in closer to the end of the day and started cleaning everything and preparing it for the next day. I think that would be very helpful. Maybe like the stocking of things or helping gather materials that I needed could also be a way to do it without having to be involved. But if you were there during the time of childcare, I would think you would still need to have like the background check and you would still need maybe some of the trainings. I am not sure because I've never hired someone that didn't work also directly with the children, but there's tons of jobs that we did that were not involving children. Well, for sure. The cleaning, the sanitizing, stocking supplies of diapers, wipes, etc., cutting out laminated items, preparing all the materials for activities, um, folding nap blankets, stacking nap cots, um, wiping down na nap cots, uh, wiping down toys, just there's so much that, um, you know, would help out the person who's actually working there behind the scenes, I guess is what you'd call it. What was your least favorite and most favorite part of your job? My least favorite part was, um, there were a couple things. One was when I would have kids who misbehaved and I didn't know the family well enough to talk to them about it. And I didn't know how to do that. Um, my other least favorite thing was I didn't always feel comfortable in someone's home. So I was always worried that I would have maybe changed the channel from the last channel they had seen or um, left things a little different than they had left it. And now that I'm a grown up, I don't, I realized that wasn't, that wasn't important that families weren't worried about that kind of stuff. But I was just, I was nervous about being in someone's home and doing all the right things. Favorite part of babysitting was just spending time with kids because I just really, really love kids. I used to have this um, girl who is now a teacher herself. Her name was Sloan. And she would line up all her babies and teach them. And she would just say the sweetest things to them while we were together. And she just, we just enjoyed being together so much. So um, my favorite part was really just doing anything with the, with the kids that I babysat for. And I was lucky to have some really good families. 
Um, I think my least favorite part of my job was having to correct misbehaviors um, and be kind of strict with um, children sometimes. Um, but like I said, that was because for safety reasons, you know, you had to be a strict lifeguard. Um, but I think that my favorite part was just how fun and funny kids are. I feel like they say the funniest things and, um, you know, they're always, you know, happy. There's always something to be excited about. And some of my favorite memories um, when I got to teach swimming lessons was getting to be creative um, on how, you know, just like learn how children's le children learn and um, come up with fun games and um, just get to, you know, get in the mind of a four-year-old for a little bit. I believe my least favorite part of doing this was when there were changes in routine. Routine was was really good for kids and consistency. So when we had a change in routine, say the weather was really bad for a long period of time, it was so cold that you couldn't go outside, so we lost our outside time, having to come up with new ways to get out their energy during that time period. Um, was always difficult if it went on for a while and then we all had to kind of change up our routine and that affects everyone. Transition times were always really difficult. Um, and another one in change of routine it was when um, a parent came late and picked up their child so the child stayed past their normal time, which all falls into routine. That was a very upsetting time for everyone the child knows that they're the last one and they want to leave. So I think that's my least favorite part of any of it. But um, my favorite part was getting to work with some wonderful children, some wonderful families, made so many long-term relationships with these children and families. Um, just the support that you would feel um, from all of them. And I think the thing that I totally miss the most, that's probably my all time favorite, are the hugs, uh, the physical touch. And right now, we don't even get that much. So I'm really missing kid hugs right now. Well, my least favorite was cleaning up and sanitizing. Um, it was just constant, always, um, especially cleaning up accidents. Uh, you know, because it was hard enough keeping up with what needed to be cleaned on a daily basis. And then you'd have this huge accident and then it was like, ugh. uh, my favorite time was circle time and singing for sure. Um, uh, I loved circle time. I think everybody should do circle time every day. Do you have any advice for somebody who is interested in working in childcare? Come prepared with activities. Kids do better if they can stay occupied, and so my families that I babysat for would call me Mary Poppins because I would bring a bag that had a different activity every time or a couple of activities. I would make like an easy craft or I would bring coloring books or different things, maybe a favorite toy of mine from childhood that the kid could play with. And I just always tried to have, you know, some different things prepared so that the kids would, um, we would have something to do the whole time. And that way they always really felt like they were getting a special treat to get to be with me. And I never had to worry too much about misbehavior because they didn't have time to get in trouble. So that's all I've got as far as childcare. Start off with maybe volunteering um, and see if you like working with children. I think um, when I was younger, that included babysitting and, um, you know, offering to watch my cousin's um, kids and um, I think also any sort of volunteering, there, there were aides at the pool who helped with swim lessons um, who were younger. And um, I think they got a lot of experience and a lot of those, um, even though it wasn't a paid position, they then went on to be able to become swim lessons instructors themselves. Um, and so my advice is just try to volunteer, even if it's something like vacation Bible school or uh, maybe in a child care facility, um, but see if, if it's something that you enjoy. I think that for me, lifeguarding was the first time that I realized that I might be interested in being a teacher. And I remember, um, 
one of the patrons who came to the pool a lot, him and his wife used to swim laps. He came up to me one day and said, you know, I think that you'd make a really good teacher. And I think I was probably 17 years old and I didn't really think about it, but it was, um, it's really nice when an adult like notices the hard work that you're putting in. Um, and so if you ever have that moment where an adult tells you, hey, you're really good at this, maybe you should think about it. Um, you know, it wasn't until you know, several years later that I, I didn't even think about that moment. Um, but pay attention when people tell you that you're good at something. One thing, having a really good attitude, um, realizing that you might love children, but there is a whole lot more to it than playing with children. Um, that's the best part of it, but man, there is a lot of other responsibilities that go into it. So going in with a good attitude, flexible, open-minded, but also getting all the experience that you can. If you are wanting to work with children right now when you're in high school, um, babysitting, doing different activities um, at your church that are with children. So getting all the experience that you can um, to be involved with children. Um, also just being ready to know that you're going to have to do jobs that might not be just teaching. You might be cleaning and cooking and sweeping and mopping and just all the things that go involved with just keeping the upkeep of the building. Um, but I would think right now, if you were thinking about going into it, I would start working with children. I'd maybe look into the Red Cross classes that are for babysitting. There's also maybe getting CPR and first aid certified where you know what that's all about. They've got to make sure they can stand being around messes without freaking out. Because, like, if you can't stand being around messes and feel like, oh, my gosh, I can't handle this, you shouldn't be in child care. Because kiddos are messy. It's just plain and simple. Um, volunteer. Just um, observe. Go to a place and say, hey, can I just, you know, hang out and see what you do because I'm interested in this. Um I'm sure nowadays you could probably watch a lot of, um, I don't know, YouTube videos or something of what child care is like. But, um, you know, it's it's uh, the messy part. And, you know, the kids are they're going to slobber on you and it, you just have to be able to deal with it. Um, you know, make sure you can you have a good immune system because that's a big thing. What do you think? Are you interested in working in childcare? If you are, we encourage you to volunteer and gain experience. Remember to have patience, be safe, and have fun. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please leave us a comment to let us know if you're here and if you're learning.